a little bit ago, I wrote a fan fiction that I'd had um, in mind for actually quite some time. Many months have passed now, and it's called Her Face is Painted. It has to do with Brightheart. This is an alternative universe, an AU, if you will. <laughs> um, and I could have sworn I had posted it to my DeviantArt and for Affinity, but apparently I didn't. Um, but anyway, I, I'm just I'm just gonna read it and then post it. And um, yeah, her face is painted. I also haven't done any edits. This is my first time looking at it since I typed it up, so this will be fun. But I'm, yeah. <laughs> Let's try this again. Her face is painted. A pink tongue rasping over a little white pelt, soft as fresh snowfall. Mother grim daughter as hers before her had done many moons ago. But where this queen was covered in red patches and missing half her set of blue eyes, the grandmother to her kit had been fully formed till the day she died, known for her beauty and grace and the purity she had never lost as reflected by her solid set of all palest furs. Too many kits had perished the leaf bear before, and a thriving litter of four would have been a perfect blessing. Not one of the litter was removed before their time, not even when ShadowClan stole them away from the womb of ThunderClan camp. It seemed that even the weaker son and daughter of Lionheart and Frostfur were filled with the same strength as both of their parents. The dazzling Whiteford mother did her best to convince Thorn Kit and Bright Kit of this as they were groomed before their apprentice ceremony. You will be the bravest of warriors, just like Lionheart, Frostfur had purred to them with deep emotion welling among her voice. But Mama, Brightkit had whimpered, Papa died. A face of regret before the Snowford Queen pulled her last two kits closer to her body, before they could no longer be so little and so distinctly hers. Yes, and our hearts will never forget the amazing warrior that he was, but he died sacrificing himself for the clan and for us. There is no better cause for any of us to give our life for than that. She had only wanted to make her late father proud. When the too quick approaching day finally hit her nest, Brightheart beamed at her only child as the young cat was named Whitepaw, an apprentice to begin the journey of learning the ways of ThunderClan warriors. Had Lionheart's spirit sat next to Frostfur and offered her strong warmth when she watched their late blooming son and daughter, as Cloudtail's physical form did to that daughter now. When Frostfur gave her smaller two kids up from the safety of the nursery, did she appreciate their forms fully intact and fur not yet nearly f so ruffled as would come to be? Did White Kit, now touching noses to her mother's own big brother, Brackenfur, look as perfect and stunning in all white as, Brightfa as Brightpaw had on her day back then? Pack, pack. But he died sacrificing himself for the clan and for us. There is no better cause for any of us to give our life for than that. Kill, kill. Was it the way his broken body was thrown through the air, as if nothing but mere ball of moss, and hitting the ground with a bloody thud that stuck with her after all these seasons? Of course. As much as she had resented the curse of being spared death in her first stages of healing, she already had known that she would never be able to let go of that single, particular night. That attempted good deed and strength for the clan. That mistake that led to the loss of her best friend's life. She had tried to embrace Swiftpaw's strength and dedication. To this day, she still spoke of how the only way she would remember him was by the way he had fought with the might of all fantastical Lion Clan. It did not need to be true. Rather, it just needed to seem true. And for those who never notice scars and pains and breaks and even blood beyond bare surface level, how could they ever suspect her scars ran deeper than beyond her outer body? In all these moons, not one of them had realized, maybe a little subconsciously, but not truly realized, that her red patches were never quite, or never quite sat the same. In some seasons, they would grow like flooded orange lakes, and in others, they would dry up into icy pale spots. What once sat on her cheek could be found in two seasons upon her forehead, but no one bothered to recognize how the seasons changed among her fur as if it had its own ecosystem. Some nights were plagued with big, dark dogs flinging the lifeless frames of cats she had known, not Swiftpaw, 
not this time, but others. Cinderpelt should never have had to live with the crippling of her dreams. Darkstripe had tallied too many sins, especially after attempting to end the life of a kit. Though Sorrelpaw clearly had no hope when her leg broke. Frostfur, the only cat whose blood Brightheart had felt unable to wear, had sent her kits off to be doomed by their own lives. How could she? What kind of mother could? What kind of mother would? A familiar presence, whose persistence had yet to cease, had come close. His eyes had been unseeing for some time now, but he had maintained his strength and abilities otherwise, if not more so. In this moment of celebration of Thunderclan's newest little white sacrifice, Longtail put his muzzle to Brightheart's fuller ear and said, "'She will be okay.' "'You can't promise that.' The queen's breath barely carried the words from within. Still, he had caught them enough to hear what no others could. "'I can.' No matter what happens, wishing the best and expecting the worst, she will be okay, because she has to be, as we all have to be. How can love be worth anything, if there is never any risk of losing it? Perhaps Longtail had actually been the bravest warrior that Brightheart had ever known. He had learned to heal, despite harsh realities, and to continue giving to others for their sake, even when it cost him, and it ultimately cost him his life to a tree. Seasons came, and seasons went over and over again. For the second time in her life, Brightheart curled tight in her nursery nest with litter. The kit's elder sister dropped by to see them and their mother, and she purred to her, You are absolutely glowing, you know. I honestly don't remember you being such a bright white when I was growing. With joy, Brightheart meowed to Whitewing. I suppose that then my heart was not yet shining so bright. White Wing twitched her whiskers. Cloudtail's quotes have finally wormed their way into you for good. And with a slow blink of her last blue eye, the Snow White Queen bathed in the warmth of the moment, and the richness and splendor for all of their lives for which she had found bountiful love. The end! Um, so, yeah. Um, I don't know if it comes across well enough or not, but the idea is that, um... Thanks to her trauma, um, Brightheart ends up doing like serial killer things, and so like the ginger patches are actually just like blood stains that come and go, but no one really notices because they're so used to you know that sort of stuff. And also she gets overlooked, whatever. Um, and then ultimately Longtail kind of helps snap her out of it. Of course, you know Cloudtail plays his role too, and even Little White Wing. Um, so yeah, hope this was fun. I enjoyed it at least, at least reading it out like this. Um, and let me start clearing light your path, everybody. Tiger Feather out.